Forget about what I said in the other pose. Forget about us. Even if I keep updating you, I want you to treat us like a story. Like we're characters in some messed up book. They were right to keep us hidden. To tear us from reality. I don't want anyone coming here. Because if what we are gets out, I can't even comprehend the thought of it. Three days ago, I still had hope that I would get out of here, that I would see my family again, and that I would be able to tell you some of my Grammy's wild theories. Three days ago, losing hope and faith was like losing air in my lungs and struggling to breathe. But right now, after my thoughts have been twisted out of shape and my mind is hers to play with, I feel... I feel euphoric. I feel euphoric with blood pulling down my face. My thoughts dancing and my head pounding. I wonder if this is it. If this is what it is to go mad. Like Alice when she fell down the rabbit hole. I feel like I'm dancing. Just like my fingers as they tiptoe across this keyboard. I told you in the last post that I would split the next part into two posts because I didn't want to write my reality. But now it's almost like I don't care anymore. I think it played a primary role in sending me hurtling towards the edge. Towards this. This present. This reality that I'm still refusing to accept is happening. Sometimes I like to play pretend. Like all of this is just in my head. The blood pulling on the ground. The twin holes in my hands. But I can't keep lying to myself. When I come back to clarity and everything hits, I laugh. I laugh until my throat is raw. I did this. I am the reason why I am bleeding, why my head is pounding, and why there are punctures in my hands. I slammed my head into the door until I saw stars. I impaled the back of my hands with a pencil, stabbing at my flesh until it finally penetrated. And I know why I did it. I did it to chase that high again. The feeling of the ground crumbling beneath my feet, like all the air was being sucked from my lungs, leaving me gasping. Hopelessness. I crave it. I'm sure it won't take a rocket scientist to figure out how this happened, why I'm like this, why I've let this thing inside my head win. I wasn't sure at what point Jasper had hit the ground, everything had gone so fast. I had been so focused on the parasite that he had been inspecting still twined around the pencil, that I didn't see the flash of movement out of the corner of my eye. Joey Summers swinging a lead pipe into the back of his head. My first thought had been to grab the curtain pole that I had been using as a weapon, but it was too far away and something told me Joey wasn't going to appreciate me attacking him. It's not like it would hurt him anyway. Joey was built like a truck before being converted into a mindless psychopath. There was no way that I could get the upper hand at him, and he knew that. I could see it in his smile when he spoke. Oh, Mara, we're gonna have so much fun. The boy's words echoed in my mind as I watched him wrap his arms around Jasper's unconscious body and throw him over his shoulder. Tendrils sprouting from the floor twined around Jasper's wrists, binding them together. Joey's gang gave off the same static screeching noise which almost sounded like laughter. I could see them, silhouettes bleeding into the dim. They had me cornered. I felt that tether like a ribbon was wrapped around us, pulling us together. I sensed their thoughts buzzing together, severed from mine. I remembered when I could hear them perfectly. A perfect hive mind between us and vivid clarity that worked to hunt down survivors. Now it just felt and sounded like a live wire in my head. The connection had been cut and I was free from its suffocating control. And when I didn't move, Joey turned to me with a bright, skeletal smile. I hate that I recognized it. At least the monstrous part of me did. Well, come on dude, we don't have all day. He turned away from me. Jasper's body wobbling on his back. Jasper was completely out of it. I didn't want to think about the possibility of a head injury. 
but I was pretty sure getting thwacked in the back of the skull with a pipe was pretty bad. I'll relax, he's fine. It's nothing a bandage and some Tylenol and water won't fix. As if reading my mind, Joey twisted around. I could tell by his expression that he was lying, and it exhilarated him. And giving people hope and then shooting it down was like a drug to him. I knew that because I had been the same. There was nothing better than watching the light fizzle from your victim's eyes after filling them up with the hope of survival, that you'll let them go, and then continuing to hack away at them, pulling at their insides and prodding around in their skull until they drove a blade through their own heart and succumbed to the oblivion. Joey's grin was sickening, his words a twisting my gut like he could sense my panic, like he could see all those fragmented memories of what I had done as a puppet. You won't be fine if you don't follow us, though, so I'd start moving if I were you. My dad, forcing my legs into motion. I had no choice. Jasper was the only one with any semblance of what we were dealing with. If I lost him, I was screwed. Rory, I managed to choke out her name. When I stepped forward, I felt the others move with me. Ghostly footsteps and a stumbling sink. I wouldn't look at them because I would recognize them. Is she? Joey cut me off with a whistle and held out a hand. Less talking, more walking. His eyes lit up. Oh hey, that rhymes. Less talking, more walking. He let out a laugh and then the others echoed it as we headed back down the corridor. Joey leading with the others following behind me. A freak stumbled through the doors when Joey pushed through them. It was a freshman girl with dark hair pulled into a ponytail. Half of her face was missing. She ignored Joey, though I figured that was because he was dead too, or mostly dead. I still wasn't sure what exactly we were, dead or alive or maybe bald. The girl staggered past us, her gaze momentarily landing on me, before she turned her head and continued on, vacant eyes drinking in the fizzling light in front of her. I wondered if her reaction was something to do with the update. The closer that it got to 100%, were we becoming more like them? Is that why they ignored Joey and then me? Ow! Oh, a familiar disgruntled groan cut into my thoughts and I lifted my head from where I had been staring at the floor, stepping over bodies and discarded phones. Jasper's head was buried in the crook of Joey's back swinging back and forth as the guy took long strides down the hallway. Jasper groaned and I felt relief flood through me. Man, why do I feel like I've just been hit over the head with a lead pipe? I wasn't sure how to answer that. Are you okay? I hissed, keeping my voice down. He didn't move. Oh yeah, I'm great. His voice was slightly slurred. I spent eight months somehow not getting captured hiding out in the same classroom and avoiding these psychos. I meet you and I'm taken straight away. Jasper scoffed into Joey's filthy shirt. Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I should have brained you when I had the chance. Lifting his head, he squinted through half-lidded eyes. I caught a smear of red under his nose and my stomach twisted with nausea. Uh, no offense. Fear is the main component of anger, usually inducing words that weren't meant to be taken seriously. Jasper was scared and putting up a front like usual, hiding behind sarcasm. Still though, I couldn't resist a scowl. Thanks. I spat back at him. So that's why you locked me out of the classroom. I locked you out of the classroom because I thought you went to hang out with the freaking squad here. I told you that I didn't. I gritted out. I'm sorry, did you expect me to trust you and you had that freaking worm thing wriggling around in your head? And speaking of that, I still don't know what it is or how it works and what it's doing to us, and that most likely never will, because you let your psycho gang to me. I didn't respond that time, but I did duck my head, avoiding his glare. Harsh, Joey chuckled, the other is tittering with him. It was like being back at school in a way. We headed up a flight of stairs, past a throng of freaks that blanked us. Come on, cut Mara some slack. And Tay, as much as I love you two bickering, I'd prefer it if you shut up. You're messing with my vibe. 
And Jasper scoffed. Sure, and where exactly are we going? He squirmed in his restraints and I realized that he was right. I really had brought him to his doom. Let me guess, you're taking us to see the queen. Rory, I thought dizzily. He meant Rory. Ding, 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 we have a winner, Joey sang. Hey, you're smarter than you look, bro. Or I just have brains, Jasper equipped back, unlike you. As comforting as Jasper's and nonchalant attitude was, it didn't last. When we were dragged into the main IT room, he paled, struggling in his restraints. I saw fear ignite in his eyes, and I didn't blame him. Jasper was right. The plant-like thing which had spread across the school, that was growing on every wall and stuck in every door hinge, had stemmed from the room that we were in. It was everywhere, having taken over the whole school. The classroom was like every other but acted more of a ground zero. The carpet was stained in old red, remnants of bodies and rotting freaks mounted in the corner. Desks acting as surgical beds and chairs piled on top of each other. I hated that I recognized the place. We were dragged in front of a whiteboard which was turned on, a bright screen glaring back. I was shoved to my knees and Jasper was dropped onto the ground. Joey kicked me in the back and I fell into my front, gritting my teeth. Bow, Joey said, forcing Jasper onto his knees. Come on, guys, be polite. Great, Jasper ignored Joey. I really thought I was going to get out of here. I thought that I was going to cure this thing, see my dad and maybe get a Dairy Queen. But no, I'm about to get my freaking brain fried. Bow, Joey repeated. I won't ask you again. And if we don't, Jasper challenged. What happens if we don't bow, huh? He lifted his head, pulling at his bound wrist. Oh, spare me the dramatic entrance, Aurora. He gritted out. Come on out. Joey bent down in front of us and shuffled towards Jasper. He reached out and traced the boy's cheeks with filthy, claw-like nails. So, you're the one who got it out, huh? He chuckled. Nice one, man. I gotta applaud you. That's some serious smarts you got. Thanks, Jasper spat. He squirmed in his bindings. Fancy telling me what that thing is. He narrowed his eyes. Actually, what are you, huh? Yeah, I'm talking to you. The thing inside Joey. Joey's lip curled. Dude, he laughed. You've got the wrong idea. Then what the heck are you? Jasper demanded in a hysterical hiss. I sensed his desperation to understand and to be in the know. You started out as a what? Some kind of messed up brainwashing video. Turned half the student body into cannibalistic psychos and the other half into mutated freaks. And now you're what? Some kind of brand new life form. How did you evolve so fast and why in kids' brains? You form through brain tissue and learn through us. That shouldn't be possible in a matter of days. What's the update, Joey? That countdown on everyone's phones. What is it? Dang. Joey straightened up. You talk too much. Anything else you want to get off your chest? I thought Jasper was going to stop, but he kept going and tripping over his words. Connor Marlowe. Jasper tried to stand up, but Joey pulled him back to his knees. He hit the ground with a hiss, but he didn't stop struggling. Didn't stop trying to get away. Trying to get answers, which must have been driving him mad. I've been studying kids both mutated and in state since this all started, and he's different. Whatever is in his head, it's doing something to him. It's converting organic matter at an unprecedented rate. What the heck are you doing to him? To all those kids in stasis that you love to rot? Joey's gaze flitted to me. Is he always like this? Answer me, Jasper gritted out. You're Aurora's soldier, whatever that thing is, and nestled inside Joey Summer's brain. I get that. But how did she do it? That's what's driving me crazy. You evolved from a simple computer virus into a physical form. You learned through us and became intelligent enough to become this. To do all this messed up stuff and that's fascinating. Horrifying, yes, but truly freaking amazing. He laughed. But it was more of a choke sob. Seriously, I've got to know your secret. 
I couldn't tell if he was stalling or not. From looking at the boy's expression, though, I knew part of him wasn't. Jasper really was in awe of the virus. Come on, Joey, he shrugged. Or the worm thing inside of Joey. Fry my brain, sure. You can take me apart and eat me or whatever the messed up stuff you guys do to kids in here. But at least tell me what you are. Tell me how you came to be. Jasper, I hissed out in warning. I wasn't looking at him though instead. I had caught a glimpse of something glittering through the sea of green. Something plastic and man-made and completely out of place in a room, taken over by so-called nature. I knew what it was automatically. I had recognized it from that day. The day everything had ended. Rory's memory drive. I knew the old Pokemon sticker stuck to it. I was the one who had gotten her it for Christmas. The memory drive was sticking from one of the computer towers. The one that Rory must have used to upload the virus. Jasper nudged me and I knew that he had seen it too. His eyes were wide and his lips were curled. We had to get that memory drive. But how though, Jasper was tied up. I knew there was no chance of going against Joey. Not when he had the strength that I didn't even think possible. The footsteps took me out of my thoughts, however. When I lifted my head, I felt my world shatter around me. I wanted to believe that she wasn't a part of this. That Rory was an innocent bystander and had become a mutated freak. Or was still out there hiding. Hiding out in the classroom like Jasper. But there she was. Standing directly in front of me. I didn't want to believe that it was her. It couldn't be her. But I recognized her hair automatically. Tangled golden curls hanging in filthy rat tails and empty sockets drinking in oblivion. Her eyes had been cleanly plucked out. What placed with something wrong, something alive. Glittering inside tangled greenery. And vines replaced human pupils. She was still wearing the shorts and t-shirt that she had worn that day. The outfit that I had said looked childish. To which she had laughed at. Her voice was still in my head and yet I couldn't match it to the monster standing in front of me. The monster with tendrils and vines and thorns wrapped around her head. Almost resembling a crown. They were in her head, I thought. Bio crawling up my throat. The same tendrils that bound Jasper's wrist together. The same ones that clung to the walls and corridors were sticking from her head. I could see the insertion points when she turned around and said something to Levi, who was standing by the door. I had to swallow barf. Unlike Joey, Rory was alive at least to an extent. How could I believe that when old blood stained her temples and tainted her scalp? I don't know. Whatever it was which was wrapped around her head had taken full control forcing itself into the back of her skull, turning her into what Jasper had said, their leader. I finally understood what he meant when he called her their queen. Rory's lips were still intact, curving into an amused smile as she drank in what must have been my look of horror. I couldn't stop staring at her. Next to me, Jasper said something, but I couldn't focus on him. Only Rory. Ever since I had been woken up when Jasper pulled that thing out of my head, I had been in denial that Rory would do something like this. But looking at her right then, at her look of triumph, the crown of thorns sticking from her head, I started to wonder if I was wrong. Her expression confused me. She must have been in some pain, I thought, surely. Blood dribbled down her face in thick rivulets and yet her smile only widened. She wasn't feeling anything. No pain, no nothing. What is this, the Lord of the Flies? Jasper muttered. At the corner of my eye, his gaze was pinpointed on the memory drive, flicking between Joey and the computer tower. He was planning something. I wanted to know what it was, but I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. Mara! Rory dropped to her knees in front of me. She wrapped her arms around me, burying her head at my shoulder. She was so warm and smelled like Rory like her favorite mango perfume. When I took sharp inhales, taking in her scent, the real aroma started to flood my nose and the back of my mouth. Rot. I could smell rot and dirt and the thing clinging to her head for dear life. When she got close to me, her breath in my ear murmuring that she had missed me, I sensed that same crackling and buzzing in the air, the connection between us emitting from her. 
There was something wrong with her voice. A static buzz I cling to it. Almost like I was talking to her on a phone with a bad connection. Where have you been? She pulled away. Her brand new eyes are glittering. I've been looking for you everywhere. I flinched when she reached out, grazing her hand over my cheek. Rory inclined her head, mocking a pout. Oh, Mara, you were my favorite. What happened? We were having so much fun together. But then you left us. I was so worried, Mara. It was him. Joey spoke up from behind him. His arms were folded across his chest. Jasper Mycroft got it out. Hmm. Rory straightened up, her attention going to Jasper. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Hey, Mara. And Jasper hissed. You remember when you told me that you were going to speak to this friend of yours. Well, now's the time. I didn't look at him, only focusing on what was left of my best friend. Rory. I didn't trust my voice. I didn't trust that I wasn't going to break down in front of her. Listen to me, okay? I'm listening. Her voice was sing-songy. What did you do? I whispered. All of this. I gestured around the room. You didn't do this right. Well, what do you mean, Mara? Of course I did this. Her lips broke out into a grin. Mara, I made paradise. Isn't this the coolest thing like ever? Like we're in a fairy tale. Like we're in Sleeping Beauty. And Jasper hissed. You're kidding. He said in a breath. He twisted to me like it was my fault. You're telling me that we're living out the last of us because your friend can't differentiate fiction from reality. Something cold slipped down my spine and I shook my head. No, I told him. No, she's being controlled. I turned back to Rory. Rory. My voice shattered and I hated that. I hated that I couldn't talk to her because part of me believed her that she really wanted to do this. That thing inside your head, I got it out. We can get it out of you, okay? You need to snap out of it and freaking listen to me. This isn't you. I couldn't resist a laugh. Rory, this isn't you. You would never want this. Rory frowned. Oh. Her vacant eyes fell on me. Then what am I, Mara? One of those things, I yelled back. Look what you did. It wasn't your fault. Whoever sold you that virus knew what was going to happen. They did this intentionally. You had nothing to do with it. Rory shook her head. I'm not being controlled, Mara. What? I could practically hear the cogs in Jasper's brain turning. So what are you? She grinned. Ask me what you really want to hear. Jasper shot me a look before nodding, squirming in the vines that wrapped around his wrist. All right, he said in a breath. Since your right hand is literally brain dead, what's the deal with the update? Well, that's a hard question to answer, she sighed. Well, for the first one, I'm sure Mara can answer that. The second one, however, is easy. Human beings are all about happiness, right? They crave it from the moment that they're born. It's adorable. She shuffled over to Jasper and reached out, brushing a stray lock of hair out of his eyes. It's boring, Rory shrugged. It's so boring. It's the status quo, right? We want to be happy. We want to live normal day-to-day -day lives until we go to college and get jobs and grow old and that. That is so... Trailing off, Rory looked at Jasper to answer for her. Boring? He raised a brow. Yes, she clapped her hands together. You guys don't pay attention to emotions that really matter. You know, the ones that get your blood boiling, your synapses tingling, anger, pain, hopelessness. She counted them on her hands. I figured, why be happy when you can be hopeless? It's certainly less boring than being gung-ho all the time. So, with these feelings already intact, it was easy. After establishing myself, I played with your heads. The things were a little rusty at first. I was still learning during the very first update. I mean, Mara should know. She was quite the example. Right, Mara? I didn't reply. I was taking in her words slowly. She meant that first day. 
when I had watched the kids tearing at each other's throats. She's shy, Rory said. Anyway, so yeah, after some playing around, I fixed them. What I mean is I wanted to create human beings whose brains worked on a whole different level. It just required a little twisty twist. When you feel pain, like for example, I do this. She flicked Jasper in the forehead. When the boy didn't react, Rory pouted. You're supposed to say ow. Ow, Jasper said dryly. Seriously, the villainous monologue is cringe. Just get on with it. Rory smiled, sending me a look. I like him. He's funny. She cleared her throat. I'm getting off topic anyway. I waved my magic wand and ta-da, you no longer feel pain when you hurt yourself. Instead, it's like the best thing you've ever felt. Like sex, but 10, no 20, no 50 times better. It's like a drug and you crave it until it drives you crazy. You'll hurt yourself and others, doing things to your own body until you chase that high. Pure ecstasy, exhilaration. You'll be bored of normal life like me, like I've been bored my whole life. You won't think, you'll just act, and you'll do that completely under my control. Rory finished, her lips and grazing Jasper's before she moved away with a chuckle. She gestured to Joey and then to Levi and Ben. You see, aren't they beautiful? Sure, I went wrong at some point and I made those freaks outside. Rory shook her head. Some kids' brains just don't compute. I was surprised when Jasper laughed. You did this because you were bored. I'm sorry, was TikTok and Twitter not enough for you? So what, how much of this is you and how much is the virus? Stop. I managed to choke out. Stop talking to it like it's her. Jasper shot me the side eye. Did I give you brain damage when I got that thing out? Mara, that is her, that's Rory. I don't know, but that doesn't sound like a parasitic worm thing. Sounds like a psycho girl to me. He jerked his head at her. Hey, so, just so I'm clear, who am I talking to right now? She didn't answer. Her gaze on him. Her smile was growing. I decided to ignore that look. You would never do this. I spoke to her directly. Rory, what the heck, this isn't you. I hated, God, I hated the way she was looking at me. Like she wanted me to continue, like she wanted me to lose all my breath, trying to prove that she was innocent and then shatter whatever hope I had left that she was still in there, still my best friend. You're an idiot, Mara, Rory murmured. I've been messed in the head since I was little. I just needed a little awakening. I needed that fairy dust. I wanted to be real as a kid. Her smile quirked like she was looking directly into my head. Marmalade. Her words had made my stomach twist. I told myself that I would bury that memory that I would forget what she did to my cat. Forgive and forget, that's what we promised as kids. You stopped her suffering, I whispered. You, you stopped her hurting, that's what you said. Rory sighed. Oh, I beat her to death with your favorite book, Mara, she giggled, and I enjoyed it. I shook my head. My eyes were stinging, my chest aching. No, no, you didn't. I couldn't breathe then. Tell me you didn't. I wanted to scream. You didn't. Rory's expression was almost as sympathetic. Oh, Mara, I'm still me. I've just been given a new perspective. The virus didn't make me. I made it. All that took was a little push that day. I can't say that I expected it. I mean, all I wanted to do was make everyone laugh with a meme. But it made me better, Mara. All those sickening thoughts from my childhood and then teenagehood... Thoughts that I buried deep down because I thought I was going crazy. Like, for example, did you know that I planned to kill our math teacher in middle school? She shrugged. I thought it would be cool, you know. I wanted to know what his head would look like as splattered across the floor. Brains and all. It's pretty morbid, right? She hummed. You see, we all have these thoughts, we just ignore them. But they drove me crazy, Mara. Intrusive thoughts telling me to kill. Because I was bored, I like with marmalade. I wanted to play and I was bored. So boringly bored that you weren't paying attention to me. Her eyes followed me. Your kitty always got in the way. You were always like, 
Oh, I'm playing with marmalade today. I'm taking marmalade to the vet. He never wanted to play with me, so I made marmalade go bye-bye. Jasper clucked his tongue. You need serious therapy, Jesus Christ. Her newly woven eyes glittered. Do you want to know what noises she made? My God, it was pathetic. It took me three hits to take her out, Mara, and even then, the poor thing wouldn't even bleed. No, I thought, my body trembling. I was wrong, so wrong. Rory didn't kill Marmalade because she was suffering. She did it to get a reaction out of me. And what she was saying it wasn't making sense. That day, I managed to whisper, Did you know what was going to happen? She shook her head. You're asking the wrong person. I already told you. Are you deaf, Mara? If I'm being totally honest with you, nothing changed. I still thought that I was pranking everyone with the video. I was oblivious. She straightened up. It turns out, though, that there was something hidden inside it. Something that, when exposed to our entire student body, created what we are today. It basically made multiple copies of how I've been feeling all my life, but tenfold. I was its first host after all, and the failures I thought, they were the freaks, the ones that didn't submit, the successful ones are what happened to Joey and his group. Connor Marlowe, he was one of the first, before I brained him with a fire extinguisher. You mean that worm thing? Jasper leaned forward, his face pale. He had given up when Joey had taken a stance in front of the computer tower. What is it? Seriously, how is it possible that something like that can evolve and learn so quickly? He shuddered. And if you're not talking complete BS, shape its entire being around a psychotic teenage girl with uh, serious issues. Wait, no, scratch that. The kids in your hallways your freaking nanobots are eating from the inside out. What are you doing to them? Rory smirked. Oh, so full of questions, she laughed. If I have an idea, how about a game? Oh, I love games, Jasper murmured. He leaned forward with challenging eyes. So what kind, uh, because I presume after giving your grand speech, you'll be turning our brains to mush too. Rory folded her arms. What was your name again? Jasper. Jasper Mycroft. His expression didn't waver. I'm zombie boy to most kids, but sure. Jasper Mycroft. Rory murmured taking slow steps towards him. Let's play a game called Who Hasn't Watched My April Fool's Video? As soon as the words left her mouth, the screen in front of us lit up. She smiled at him. You managed to avoid my video, which is a talent. How did you do it? Jasper rolled his eyes. I was asleep, and even if I was awake, I wouldn't watch it. Stinky Uh-Oh was years old. How funny. Rory murmured. I don't think he gives you a choice. Oh, I have an impenetrable will, Jasper gritted out. He didn't look away from the screen, though. Rory hummed. Hmm, well, you can watch it again. Once again, I found myself staring at the smiling monkey and that same noise of piercing my ears. I couldn't look away. My gaze captured by the image my brain being contorted by the sound rattling in my skull. My thoughts turned fuzzy and slowly, I felt my lips start to stretch into a grin. It took 15 seconds to take effect and I was counting them in my head. Slowly, something was taking shape in my head, tangling around my being, and I was suddenly wondering how good it would feel if my fingernails were clawing at the flesh of my cheeks and plucking my eyes from my sockets, which would be good. It was almost like I was in a dream, walking on air as my mind was plunged into nothing. I was on the seventh second when the screen went black, and whatever had begun to crawl inside my mind had retracted. Something warm dripped down my chin. Blood. Huh. Roy's voice cut into me, bringing me out of it. Well, that's strange. The room swam back into focus and Roy was in front of me, but she wasn't looking at me. She was looking at Jasper. And then I noticed him. He looked exactly the same. While I was struggling to breathe, staring down at my fingernails which I had wanted to rip into the flesh of my face, he sat still, his expression unwavering. 
as if she was uh, fascinated by him. Rari nodded in front of him with a genuine look of confusion. She leaned forward and played with his cheeks, grasping a fistful of his hair and tugging it back. Jasper didn't cry out, but he did let out a hiss, squeezing his eyes shut. Hmm, I wonder why it's not working on you. That's, wow, it's a total mystery. How it didn't affect you not once, but twice. Rory stood up. Which is why I'm going to have to play a different game with you. I told you, Jasper said. I was sleeping so I didn't see your stupid video. No. Rory's expression darkened. As she spoke, I caught movements from the corner of my eye. They came fast, sliding out of the dark. Vines twisting across the floor, wriggling their way over to Jasper. When they crawled up his back and snaked around his waist, creeping up and up and up until they reached his neck, something warm slid up my throat. Rory towered over him. She wasn't smiling, but her eyes, or at least what was left of her eyes, were shining. You're immune to my video, she murmured. Nobody is immune to my video, not even the strongest will, so I would like to know. Oh yeah? Jasper's voice was shaking. And how are you planning to do that, huh? Well, Rory shot me a smile, like she was dangling Jasper in front of me. It was marmalade all over again. Well, if this video isn't working on you, and I can't incite an external reaction, how about an internal one? What? Jasper hissed out, before one of the tendrils entered the back of his head followed by another and another. They slid in so effortlessly, inciting a sudden screech ripping from his mouth. I had never heard him cry before, but this, it was animalistic, a pain and agony. I would rather die than feel. A sickening, snapping noise sent my stomach into my throat. I could sense them like they were in my head, squirming tendrils, wrapping around his skull and taking his brain into a vice grab. Jasper jolted, his eyes flickering, his lips forming an owl, but no sound came out. I glimpsed rivulets of red drip from his nose from the pressure. Rory closed her eyes and inhaled before opening them again. Her frown twisted into a grin. Oh, oh, that's why. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. See, you thought that you were clever. For some reason, Jasper Mycroft, the video doesn't work on you. It worked on Mara and Joey, even me, but not on you. Now observe. The human brain is a fascinating thing that I'm still learning about. However, I do know the basics. I know that if I do this, if I press the slightest pressure here, oh, and here. I heard it and then the sound of his skull being squeezed. Jasper screamed. A deep, guttural scream. His eyes flew open wide and terrified. The tendrils that held him kept him steady, twining around his body to freeze him in place. Oh, that's right. Rory murmured, her smile widening. Oh, there we go. So what if I do this? This time he didn't cry out, his body shuddering, lips forming as soundless words. Okay, so question one, Jasper. Did you or did you not watch the video? Stop. His voice barely audible. Please. When I opened my mouth to speak, no sound came out. Rory exhaled. That's what will break you, she murmured. Not what I'm doing to you. The fact that I'm inside your brain, pressing all your pressure points. Not the idea of dying or becoming like me and joining this hive mind, this euphoric family, oh no. That would be merciful. What's going to break you is everyone finding out what you did. Now again, did you watch the video? Yes. Jasper whispered, yes, yes, yes. And why aren't you either a freak or one of us? Come on, Jasper, it's killing you. Please stop, just kill me. Try harder, baby. Tell Mara what you promised yourself you would never tell a soul. Tell her and I'll stop. No. Then I'll just go deeper. All that pain and guilt and anger, why is it so bad, huh? What you did was good. And now you're being rewarded. Just wait, Jasper. Soon all of it will feel good, I promise you. Mara, Jasper gritted out. His body was convulsing. My laptop. Everything's on my laptop. What? I choked. No, you're not going to get out of here. Just freeze.
freaking listen to me, he sobbed. My laptop, say it. Your laptop. As if saying that with his last strength, his screams turned into whines and then whimpers. Rory was laughing. Oh, come on, Jasper. I think we both know that it's time to let go. I don't know how he held on for it felt like hours. It felt like forever with him next to me. His body jolting, gulping down screams and crying and sobbing. Speaking to me in gibberish before he stopped. He just, he just stopped. When Jasper's body relaxed against mine, his head bowing, I was still thinking of his last words. Rory's hand came down on my shoulders and I was pulled to my feet away from Jasper. The tendrils still hadn't left his brain and more slithered over to him, wrapping themselves around his head. I tried to look at him, but she cupped my face and brought my gaze to her. What did you do? What did you do to him? Rory sighed. Honestly, Mara, you talk like he's some lovable sidekick, which is kind of adorable. You always like guys like him. He never was that. Now he thinks just like me, like all of us. Say bye-bye to all logical thought. Jasper will happily carve out his own insides, just to thrive off that momentary burst of euphoria that we all crave, but we don't talk about. Because we all want to feel something, right? The memory drive, I thought. If I pulled it out, would it make a difference? I didn't think. Getting to my feet, I lunged toward it. I was so close, my hands at gripping and pulling, but it wasn't enough. It was stuck, glued inside the USB port. Cool hands pulled me back finally. Oh no, Mara. Rory murmured into my neck. That's not how the game goes. I broke your little friend, she whispered. And then I'm going to break you. I want to know how far you can go before you reach your breaking point. I can make you like me right here, right now. But I want it organically, Mara. Because you're special. I want it slow, so you feel everything. Feel yourself splinter apart piece by piece. And when the update is ready, you can join us. And you'll welcome us with open arms. You'll come home. And then we'll play again, okay? Just like when we were kids. She turned to Jasper. Right, Jasper. The boy was shaking, I realized. He was curled up in his body jerking. Forgive me. He whispered before letting out a hysterical laugh. He tipped onto his sides and curled into a ball, his laughter muffled in his arms. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Do you forgive me? No, no, never, never forgive me. Never forgive me. No, no, never. Rory turned back to me with a laugh. Oh, I'm sure Jasper's current lapse in sanity will help you on the way. Joey kicked the boy in the stomach and Jasper burst into childlike giggles, rolling around on the floor. Yep, Joey chuckled. We've lost him. I started towards Jasper, who was still rattling and giggling, his eyes squeezed shut. I stopped, however, when I noticed that he was chewing on his fingers, ripping at the flesh, blood pooling between clenched teeth. It was his eyes that I wanted to see. I wanted to know for sure that they were hollow, devoid of life, so I could make sure that he was gone. Before that I could see for sure, however, I was grabbed and dragged out. I went back to Jasper's classroom. This time, the freaks did come after me. Maybe the others, the ones that Rory had aimed to make, shielded me earlier. When I got back to the classroom, I did exactly what Jasper said. I found his laptop in his bag and I switched it on. On it were things that I expected. His findings from the experiments, all the kids that had failed. There was nothing, nothing new anyway. So what did he want me to find? After a while of looking, I finally caught what was open on on the bottom of the screen. It didn't look like any other messaging app that I knew. But still, I clicked on it and it brought up a message window. Though the messages weren't recent. They were dated all the way back to March 20th, 2021. Hey, can you do me a favor? Well, it depends what it is, young man. So, first of all, I'm not stupid. I know my dad is working on something big. I don't care about that, but I want something that can make you sleep. Like, sleep and sleep. And I know he's got something in that secret office of his. Now, are you aware of your own condition, Mr. Mycroft? Hey, come on, it's just for school. It's for April Fool's Day. Well, I believe there are several prototypes. However, I don't think your father would approve. 
dad is literally building stuff that's capable of ending the world. I doubt he would care about a prank. Right, well, I suggest you perform this prank through someone else. Unless you want to alert your father. Well, duh, I've got a pretty good idea of how I can do it. But if there are complications, are you prepared to deal with them? My god, chill out, it'll be hilarious. You're worse than my dad. Of course, I'll send it through, good luck. Hey, sweet, I owe you one. I'm winning April Fools for sure. Sorry, I can't copy all the messages. There are more, and trust me, before you come to that conclusion, you want to read more messages because they don't end there. I'll be back soon. I think I'll be back anyway. Writing this is grounding me. It's stopping me from doing bad things, at least for the time being.